Answers with Ken Ham. Today's question, what is the only answer to racism? And now, Ken Ham. In Australia, we have an indigenous people called the Australian Aborigines. When they were first discovered, you know, Captain Cook sailed up the East Coast in 1770. When they were first discovered, they didn't know uh, the God of the Bible, as, as we know. But they had some fascinating legends, dreamtime legends. They had these legends before they ever met missionaries. I just want to read one of them to you. I've abbreviated a little bit here, but uh, I want to read one of these dreamtime legends to you. This is one that, I must admit, the first time I read it, it really brought tears to my eyes, and I'll tell you why after we finished, or maybe you'll see why as we read it through. The first man ever to live in Australia was Berwickbourne. He had been made by Biami. After establishing Berwickbourne and his wife in a place that was good to live in, he put his sacred mark on a yarran tree nearby, which was the home of a swarm of bees. This is my tree, he told them, and these are my bees. You can take food anywhere you like in the land I've given you, but this tree, the bees, and the honey they make, you must never touch. If you do much evil, will befall you and all the people who will come after you. Is this reminding you of something here? <laughs> Let's go on. But one day when the woman was gathering firewood, her search carried her to Biami's tree. A brooding presence seemed to hover above her and she raised her eyes once more. Now that she was closer to the tree, she saw the bees hovering around the trunk and drops of honey glittering on the bark. She stared at them, fascinated by the sight. She had tasted the sweet excretion only once before, but here was food for many meals. She could not resist the lure of the shining drops. Letting her sticks fall to the ground, she began to climb the tree. Suddenly, there was a rush of air and a dark shape with huge black wings enveloped her. It was Naradan, the bat, whom Biami had put there to guard his yarn tree. Berwickborn's wife scrambled down and rushed to her gunya, where she hid in the darkest corner. The evil she had done could never be remedied. She had released Naradan into the world, and from that day onwards... He became the symbol of the death that afflicts all the descendants of Berwickborn. It was the end of the golden age for Berwickborn and his wife. You know, one of the reasons that that particular story that I read to you uh, brought tears to my eyes when I first read it was a recognition of the fact that the Australian Aborigines once had the truth, the truth about creation, the truth about the fall, but they've changed that story. Uh, they've handed it down, but the real record is in the Bible. You know, they had those stories before they met missionaries. I know I've had uh, scientists tell me, ah, oh, they obviously got those stories from missionaries. That's why they sound so much like the Bible. Well, that can't be right because, you see, the stories they have start from the time of the Tower of Babel and go back through the flood uh, back to creation. Whereas if missionaries were preaching to them, they'd be telling them about Jesus, and you don't see those sorts of things in their Dreamtime legends. No, it makes much more sense that they had these stories, they handed them down, uh, but they changed them and the real record is in the Bible.
You know, it's a sad fact of Australian history that the Australian Aborigines were once considered the missing links in evolution. Now, now why, why was that so? I mean, that's terrible. Well, Charles Darwin wrote a book, and the title of the book was this, and The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favoured Races in the Struggle for Life. You see, Charles Darwin was a racist. I mean, because evol his evolutionary philosophy was inherently a racist philosophy. He taught that there were different races of people that evolved at different levels. He thought the Australian Aborigines, for instance, were the missing link in history. Now, don't get me wrong, there were racist attitudes before Darwin, but like Stephen Gould said, and Stephen Gould is one of the world's leading evolutionary spokespersons from Harvard University, he said this, biological arguments for racism may have been common before 1850, but they increased by orders of magnitude following the acceptance of evolutionary theory. And that's certainly what happened because Darwinian evolution gave people a justification for racist attitudes. And that's why in 1924, the New York Tribune had an interesting article. And one of the headlines said this, missing links with mankind in the early dawn of history and has photographs of the Australian Aborigines. They considered that they were the missing links. In fact, another sad aspect of Australia's history, and we recorded this, documented it in our Creation magazine. So there were scientists from Germany, from England, uh, who, who came over to Australia or sent people to Australia. They hunted down the Aborigines, they treated them like animals, herded them over cliffs or herded them into swamps and shot them and boiled up their skulls and skinned them so they could have specimens for museums around the world. Uh, they were treated in a terrible way because of the evolutionary influence in their thinking. In fact, a couple of Australian Aborigines were taken back to England and on their arrival in London, New Lloyd's Evening Post gave the following description of the natives of Jackson Bay. They appeared to be a race totally incapable of civilization. They are cruel, particularly to their women, whom they beat in the most barbarous manner. These people are from a lower order of the human race. You see how they, they viewed the Australian Aborigines? In fact, when one of them died, uh, his body was dug up from its grave under St. John's Anglican Church in Kent and stolen by Charles Darwin's grandfather to be stuffed and exhibited at the Royal College of Surgeons. And it's also a true fact of Australia's history that they estimate five to 10,000 graves were dug up and uh, uh, skeletons, body parts sent to uh, museums around the world, uh, all in the name of evolution. 